I bet a lot of golfers have fallen for the golf industry's con. Let me explain. So for a long time, going back many years, there was almost an industry standard for golf clubs. The lofts were the same, the lengths were generally the same, and everything pretty much was uniformed. But over the years, we've started to see that change quite a lot. We're seeing lofts really change, we're seeing length of golf clubs change, and we're seeing the makeup of golf sets change. Now, picture the scene. You're out on a par three playing with three of your other friends. You might be all different abilities. Maybe one of you is a scratch player. Maybe one's a mid-teens handicap. Maybe one's just started the game. You've all got different golf clubs in your bag. When your friend, who you think you are a similar ability to, picks out an eight iron to hit, because that's what they think the club is for this par three, you then pick out an eight iron because your friend is. It gets us sometimes, it's a little bit of ego. You think that you're hitting the ball the same distance as your friend because you're a similar level of golfer, but there is a problem. Like I mentioned before, there used to be almost a uniform makeup for golf clubs but that's changed. And today we're gonna to put that to the test and show you how different some standard golf clubs can be. I've selected a group of six irons, all standard, all of different models, all come off the shelf. There hasn't been any lengthening of the clubs. I haven't asked for the clubs to be altered in loft and lie. We've just asked them to be shipped as their standards. Some have different flex of shafts in because like your friends who that you could be playing with, you might have a stiff, they might have a regular, but you're basing your decision all on the number that is on the bottom of the golf club. So let me introduce you to the clubs that we're gonna be using throughout this test. So the first eight iron that we have is the Haywood eight iron. Now this is a forged iron, it's a bladed iron, and it's coming with an X100 steel shaft in it. The next club that we have is the Cleveland Launcher Iron. Now this iron actually comes from a package set. Again, another steel iron, which comes with an R300 90 gram True Temper XP shaft in it. The next eight iron that we have is the Callaway Paradigm Iron. Again, another steel shaft coming in there, Elevate 95 gram S Flex shaft. Next eight iron that we have is the Mizuno MP225, another steel one, coming with a Project X 105 gram 5.5 regular shaft in it. The next eight iron is a new Ping G430 that has a steel Nippon AWT stiff flex shaft in it. And the final eight iron that we have is the King Cobra Tor iron, and that comes in a Dynamic Gold Tor Issue X100 shaft. So with each of those irons, one of the other things that we have to bear in mind is that they all have different technology components in them. Something like the Haywood compared to maybe the G430 or the Paradigm iron, the Paradigm and the G430 are bursting with technology. There's carbon in there, there's hollow body designs, there's different metals put inside the head to help with flex points throughout the face, as where the Haywood is more of a classic blade. It's just a forged piece of steel with a sort of cut through the middle that helps just move the weight around a little bit. So is that actually gonna affect the performance of them? So before I actually hit these clubs, there's two things that I want to know. I want to know the length of the club and I also want to know the loft of the club because if some clubs are longer than others, which we have seen happening nowadays from the golf industry, technically that should mean if I get a longer shaft, I get more club head speed. That's if I actually find the middle of the club because if I lengthen the shaft, it's harder to actually find the sweet spot more consistently. So the first thing that I did before hitting some shots was actually measure the length of each golf club. So we have three clubs that are measuring the same length, which are the Callaway, the Mizuno, and the Cobra, 36 and three quarter inches. We then have the Haywood and the Cleveland coming at 36 and a half inch, and then we have the ping coming in at 37 inches. So with the ping being a little bit longer, does that now mean that I'm gonna swing it a lot faster than say the Haywood because it's got half an inch difference on it? We're gonna hit some shots and find out what the club head speed is with all these clubs.
So what we know now about shaft length, I'm expecting the ping to be a little bit longer on the carry distance because of that extra shaft length, I should maybe see a little bit more club head speed. God, it feels short going back to this now and it's only half an inch. So I've collected some data there by hitting a load of balls in the studio and interesting to see how the club head speed is matching up to club head length. If we just throw the table up on the screen now, what we will see is in fact that the ping is the fastest club head speed coming in at 87.3 miles an hour versus say something like the Haywood that is coming in at 85.5 miles an hour. The Cleveland that is also the same length as the um, Haywood comes in at 83. Now the Callaway, the Mizuno and the Cobra are all very similar bar the Callaway was actually swung two miles an hour slower than the other two that, which were the same length as it. So knowing that, that again comes back to my point of if you're playing with people and you're falling for the trap of he's hitting a seven iron, she's hitting a seven iron, I should hit a seven iron, are your clubs the same length or have they got longer golf clubs? Have you got shorter golf clubs or have you got a longer golf club? You could be swinging it faster, which might lead us to actually hitting it further. And that's the second point I want to test. So what I did was head up to Warrington Golf Club and I got the guys in the pro shop to measure each loft of each iron. So as we can see there from the table now, there's five degrees difference between the Haywood and the Ping. That lends itself to a big yardage gap. If we worked off the idea of one degree of loft meriting maybe three to four yards, we're gonna see that five degrees of loft could potentially lead up to 20 yards difference. It's time to hit some shots, bearing this in mind and also bearing in mind what we know about the clubhead speeds because of the shafts. Have a little comment down below, which do you think is going to be the longest and which do you think is going to be the shortest of the golf clubs? It's time to hit some more shots and see what it comes out with. I could go in the hole that, or not. This is going to go significantly further than the first two. I guarantee it. A bit skinny, but it's got chances of going in. Dunk it. Love that shot today. Okay, so we've got our data from hitting another set of golf balls there and interesting results that we're gonna see here now. If we throw the table up on screen, Surprise, surprise, the ping was the longest carry distance out of all the clubs. We know that it had the longest shaft and we know that it had the least loft out of all the clubs. When we actually work down the table, we look at something like the Haywood that had one of the shortest shafts that also had the most loft out of all the irons. And it's no surprise that that is coming in as the shortest golf club. When we look at some of the others as well, when we think of technology in the golf clubs, if we look at things like the Mizuno, the Callaway, and the Ping, these are clubs that are more designed for distance as opposed to playability and workability. So we see with those three that those are in the top three when it comes to distance. If we look at things like the Cobra, which is designed for a little bit of distance, but also designed for playability, workability, maybe aimed at a player who has a slightly better handicap and has a little bit more control of their golf ball. They want to know how far they are hitting each club. They're not too fussed 
about trying to gain distance. They're more in the area of trying to gain control. So we see that that one comes in second to bottom, but that's not really a worry if I was buying those golf clubs because I'm not looking for loads of distance from the iron. When we see the Cleveland iron, that's one that is designed for forgiveness. It's designed for actually a little bit of distance, but again, more about getting the player the most out of their iron, even if they're not striking it well. So no surprise to see that that isn't topping the charts of distance. So I think there's a big takeaway from there. We know now that there is no industry standard anymore. It's very much like clothes and shoes and things. You might be a size nine in one shoe in one manufacturer, but you might be a size 10 in the other. And that's the same in golf clubs. And I think what we need to learn from this is if you are A, gonna get some new golf clubs, it's definitely worth trying them out, even if they're second-hand new golf clubs, whatever they may be, because you're gonna see a variant of results from each club. Also, another thing to bear in mind is when you're out on the golf course, you've got to know your distances because if you're going off what your playing partner is hitting, are they hitting the same length golf club as you? Do they have the same loft as your eight iron that you're going to select? And is their head actually designed for distance or is theirs more a player's golf club? Because knowing these factors now, we see that there is a big variance in distance. We can see that there's nearly 20 yards between the ping and the haywood. So that's going to have a huge effect on when you're out on the golf course. You could be severely under clubbing just because your friend has more of a distance golf club that's a little bit longer shafted. The big takeaway, guys, there's no more standard golf clubs out there. So next time you're going to go and choose some, make sure you try them or at least know what you've got in your hands. Thanks for watching. And if you've enjoyed the video, make sure you uh, check out one of the other ones here. And I'll see you with another experiment very soon.